I always picture like Tommy in a diaper well, and like what if he shit in his diaper <laughs> and it was like he's like okay mommy clean it and then I have to come and like because you know how you do it with your baby you just I'm had like, that ex- you just did oh, that know, in the, with the hospital I am Dr. Drew and this is Dr. Drew After Dark please be advised that Dr. Drew After Dark may contain sexually oriented content and be unsuitable for young children First up is our friends at Kamikodo, and you've heard me speak with enthusiasm about these products. Uh, It's not for nothing. Kamikodo makes great kitchen knives. They use traditional techniques. Each knife comes in these beautiful, heavy, heavy heavy-duty ashwood box. It's like a jewelry box. It's amazing. Kamikodo makes three knife sets, heavy-duty cleavers, ultra-sharp steak knives, everything for people serious about cooking. They only use steel source from Japan, and each blade is crafted using techniques that have been honed and perfected by generations of knife smiths. Because of their single bevel edge, Kamikoto knives can achieve a wickedly sharp edge you can't get with other knives. They are ridiculously sharp. I told you the story before about Thanksgiving. My wife has always had to use an electric knife. This Thanksgiving, no, Kamikoto. So if you like to have a Kamikoto knife, and <laughs> I, I've never had a knife set like this. This is by far the highest quality I've ever, ever engaged with, let alone had myself. So go ahead and buy now. Kamikoto is offering our listeners an extra $50 off site-wide. That, on top of their biggest sale of the year, go to kamikoto.com slash Drew. Use the offer code Drew for an extra $50 off. K-A-M-I-K-O-T-O dot com. That is K-A-M-I-K-O-T-O dot com slash Drew. Kamikoto dot com slash Drew. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Doctor After Dark. This is where uh, Christina P. and I get a chance to take a break from reality for a few minutes. And, <laughs> no. and, uh, and hopefully hopefully, um, give you guys all something in return. We, we do really want to have a rational revolution one day that we hope you'll all be a part of. But in the meantime, it's nothing but silliness and queens, queens Above 18. Queens Above 18. It's bug squishing mm-hmm. as a fetish. Oh, yes. Which last week yes. I defended the guy I there's a girl who wrote in and she said my boyfriend likes has called a foot fetish. Oh, called a, in. a voice message. Called in. He likes feet and he likes bug squishing mm-hmm. foot porn. And I said easy, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Most guys got something they're into. Yep. That is probably one of the easier fetishes to accommodate. It, it, you provided were the like, bugs are small. Is what I was saying. <laughs> Big bugs can get a little bit dicey. But yeah, go ahead. So we were talking about this, and Annie was very fired up. Yes, he was. Annie, I'd love to hear your opinion on this, too. I mean, it's real <laughs> easy. It's it's bugs. Yeah. Just step... I mean, what's the... What's what's the problem? I guess. So what I'm question. hearing is Annie also <laughs> enjoys this fetish. Possibly. So, and so no, know. I don't. I don't Annie, like bugs. I don't like bugs. But I'm but, feet though. But he's had to have this conversation with a lot of young ladies, where he's like, "What's the big deal? Come on, it's just, it's just uh, the shit once a month. What's the big deal?" Yeah. <laughs> but Annie, so you're saying what is uh, for a husband? I would say like what? Yes, of course. That's easy. That's we, easy. I, we actually agree with you, Annie. That's the reality. Yeah, it's we, not we like shitting on a chest, like Annie said. <laughs> That's gross. If right. he's like, I'm into scat, I'm into pee, I'd be like, oh gosh, that right. one's messy. This is an easy one. And what's the big deal? The guy's into it. Right? What's the big deal? You're making him happy. But also, I feel a level of shame from these wonderful men in my life. Every guy I've known is like, ugh, guys are the grossest. Ugh, guys are the worst. I feel like you guys are self-hating Jews, like self-hating <laughs> men, right? Where well, does this come from? There's two pieces. And uh, the, the, <laughs> says the, the, the Jews says laughing the Jews getting the especially most. big yeah, laugh out of this. He loves that. But... Uh, so we'll we'll hear from the 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 uh, production room in a second, but yeah. I think I think it comes from there's two things. Yeah. Okay. There's two things. We are gross and we know it. Gross. Okay. Gross. How? Like hygienically? We're just sure. Yeah. Yeah. We're just gross. We so are. So are women though. We're, women can be very gross. They can be intense, but not gross the way men. Like like I said. So I think I told you the story once. I I went with my sons when they were like 10 years old. We went to San Francisco together. The the girls were out somewhere else and we went to San Francisco. Yes. And we would literally sit in the hotel room eating snacks, watching sports until it came time to go to the stadium and watch sports and then go back and there'd be an outline of (laughs) garbage around each of us, like a murder scene, you know? Right. Uh, And when it came time to go, we just go, hey, it's time to go. All right, let's go. We just get up and go. Yeah. There'd be no like, you hang shower. out a second, wait a minute, gotta do my hair. We just put our coats on and we left. And the, and the murder outline was there <laughs> in the bed behind us. And we were sinking. We were getting worse. 
We were just getting grosser and grosser and you grosser. Tre- you pretty degenerate. Soon, pretty yeah. soon we we're talking about farts. Pretty soon we we're yeah. smelling each other's shit. Pretty yeah. soon it just go. We just go yeah. to gross places as males. We just go. See, but the thing yeah. is, I think you guys aren't aware that women are just as not, nasty. Not, they not, can be. Look, I went nasty, to an all-girls Catholic nasty. school. Listen, we were gross. The, but it, it's like you're you're harsher in your grossness, but you're not uh, grosser in your grossness. If that makes sense, <sighs> right? I mean, you can go to this. places that men can't even think to go. Yeah. Right. Which is sort of interesting, and creative, and good for you. Yeah. But we just sort of sing. <laughs> we just sort of go into the gross. Into the gross. Yeah. Like you won't shower for right. a long time. Just the, everything time. about the body. Just you guys are grody. We like you, you masturbate a lot. Mm-hmm. I think I think it has to do with your masturbation being yucky. Well, or so, it produces something, and you're well, like this. This it's a re- it's a representation of shame. Do you know well, what I mean? Well, and it's when like, the male, what's that? And when the male first experiences that, they're all like, "Oh, what the hell happened here?" Right. They don't really understand what's going on, but they can't stop. And, and the things they watch, they gross themselves out with what they watch. They don't. They feel shameful afterwards. Like right. The, I think it's the shame you're discussing. Like these normal libidinal <laughs> desires yeah, that yeah, all young men yeah. have, and then you guys are like, oh god, this the self shaming. Uh, but what if it's it's completely no- natural and normal? It, and, it is, but yeah. we we know it's gross too because because <laughs> immediately after we ejaculate, we realize how gross it is. The brain goes. The brain goes. What the hell was it? What were you yeah. doing? It's like. It got, gentlemen, am I right about this so far? Yeah, let's talk about this. I could definitely agree with that. Yeah. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, Andy, oh. please. Sometimes you set yourself up with challenges, and then after you know you begot, you're like, holy shit, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. Why did I do that? That's gross. What's, what's the matter with me? Keep going, Andy. No. I mean, I say no. I, I don't know. I've never, I've never had that thought before. I, everything that you guys are talking about, I've never. I don't really understand how. I think it's gross. I think I'm. Um, um, I'm gross as like a man. That doesn't sound right to me. I don't know. You're accepting of your impulses is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, hmm. I don't know. I mean, I like it for a reason, you know? I don't know. I've I've never felt that of like, you have shame. after I come, now it's gross okay. sitting in front of me. I don't know. I, I don't get that. Okay, good. So then he's a psycho. No, no. I'm just saying he doesn't feel the same kind of shame. He doesn't or... feel feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's whatever. I mean, that's fine. You don't have to feel that way. But there's the other part of it too, which is, that our moms often hated men ah. or didn't like men or didn't know what to do with men or were scared by men or something. There is that component. Some, something, and I'm telling you that's way more common than we'd like to imagine, I suspect. I think so. Interesting. So those messages too and maybe dad and how dad handled his sexual... Well, mom complaining about dad. Oh. Uh, and though I think, mm. I think a lot of women just, um, they don't like men. They're just, and that goes right down <laughs> into the that goes right into the little boys. Trust me, it does. as a, as a subject of that. So you wonder where my oh. shaming comes from? It comes from that. So the woman, and, the and, mother, and to be fair, if mom has any other issues about individuation of the child, that's the biggie. Right, the, the child boy. may take it as there's something wrong with me as a whatever. Yep, I mean what you're talking about is enmeshment or a mother who let's say was abused by her father. Right becomes a mother and they're maybe sexually abused or traumatized and then they don't know how to separate from the kid and the, she and the kid become one fused identity that's that's extremely harmful yeah right and then when the male tries to break away and have an independent self it's shattering mom to the mom and mom can't it. handle it and it's destructive and certainly the mom isn't available then for the rapprochement the back and forth yeah right do you understand what that part is rapprochement rapprochement uh, the yes. child goes out in the world yep. does stuff and comes yep. back for refueling yes and... so that's very very formative stuff mm-hmm. that's like from the beginning of baby and, and, crawling and exploring and, and so, i think that piece has yeah. been i sus- my gut is that piece has been sorely lacking in our child rearing in this country generally interesting that's my sense Really? That's where I think a lot of the stuff is coming from. Yeah. What do you mean the over concern of like safety and the not letting kids and the explore, narcissism and the yeah. fear of everything and inability to regulate? Yeah. I mean, people, people don't have the capacity to regulate. That's why there must be a rash. That's what you're talking about with that doctor on your show. That's what I was remembering. The ability yeah. to regulate. Well, was it a female a, doctor? Yeah. Yeah. She was interesting, yeah. right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I love it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. That's a huge issue. Well, so many people don't know how to have emotions handle emotions 
I mean, I've been in therapy for a decade, just learning how to have them, learning how to let them pass through me without being terrified of them. It's it's a, quite a thing to be a human being. Right. You have to so, be taught this stuff. Mm, or mirror or, or what's that word? Yeah. You Parented. Have, yeah, <laughs> that's that word. But but I but I would argue it's rapprochement that gives you the that sort of experience. That stuff. A safe base where the mother feels like you right. can go so and explore, you can so come back. So isn't that what therapy's kinda of done for you? Yeah, yeah. That's what it was for me too. Yeah. And so guess yeah. what? That stuff was lacking and I think that stuff's lacking in a lot of people's lives. Yeah. We have to be very confident as a mother, especially with your boys. To be like, I love you. I'm here for you. Go out and do dangerous shit. Because little boys inevitably w want to test boundaries and do crazy shit. And you have to let them do it. Yes. It's really hard to watch. But you do. You let them. Yeah. It, you, can't, you can't superimpose your anxiety on them. No. Or, or, you know, again, come down on them for the things that they're doing because they're that way as a male. You know what's so great? My therapist, she's so clever. Because I was so afraid of my first son getting cuts. And that's the first thing little boys do. The knees are always scraped up. Right? Constantly. Constantly scraped up. My first time Alice had a scrape, I was freaking out. And I, she goes, you know, you can't coddle them. You can't protect them from everything. And by the way, isn't it the most, the a most unattractive thing in a world, a feminine man? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> Like she dialed in exactly to my Eastern blocky, like toxic masculine side where I was like, Ugh, there's nothing worse than a pussy man. You're right. So that when she put it like that, I was like, go out boys, go in the streets. Like here's a chainsaw. Yeah. Here's the hose, throw some bricks around. Cause like you want that. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, what's the matter? What's the matter? No, I'm just like, I, 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 cause I want them to have um, a sense of adventure and recklessness mm. without like breaking the law or like, you know, going and past let's, that let's, shit. Let's, let's get, so that's speaking of past too. that shit, let's make sure that we say, if somebody is a feminine male, God bless them. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah, fine. Whatever. It's not my son. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. One of them is sweeter. Julian's much sweeter. Oh, so he's is he the first one? Second, baby. second one. He's so cuddly. And I don't snuggly. think I really know him yet. Well, I think really only met. He's only two. He's so sweet. Yeah, he's different than Ellis. I think I saw Ellis when he was two. Yeah, and he Cannonball. was throwing food all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm> crazy. <laughs> But Juju is more sweet, tender. So I have to nurture the tender. So they fight side. with each other. Oh yeah. Oh fuck yeah. Yeah yeah. But that's good too, right? You want and them you, to wrestle. Right. The dog you put, said you put like, they you put like claws on them and metal and stuff. Go, <laughs> go boys, go. Like a cockfight. Yes. <laughs> no. But I, you know. Yeah, man. Let's. Uh, I want to get back into some TikToks. I was oh, having such God a good time last bless time. You, yeah, the TikToks. Yeah. 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 I fucking love these things, man. Maybe nothing medical. Oh my God! I know. What, what kind of dog was that? I know. Husky. East, Easter egg dog. I just found this to be. I don't know. You tell me. How does this make you feel to see a dog tie dye? I am hoping that it's just some sort of you know water soluble whatever, and it's gonna rinse off immediately. Otherwise, I'm disgusted. Right. No. Same. I, I same. I have the same reaction I have to like overfeeding your dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, come on. It's a dog. Let him be a dog. Let the dog. The dog doesn't no. want to spend hours getting painted and no. dyed. And like, what are you doing? I know. What, what are you doing? doing? Just get a doll if you want to torture it. <laughs> yeah, it's so gross. Yeah. Fuck you for painting your dog. Wow. Christina's got to have steam tight. Next. Yeah. Just Hi, it. everything. Oh. How are you to find out? How are you feeling right now? <laughs> Hello guys, channel to our welcome. <laughs> Hello channel, welcome to my god. Hello guys, welcome to our channel. Please always wear face wash and use hand sanitizer because Corona disease is a very very dangerous city and always keep social distinguish. <laughs> Romeo. Save me! <laughs> Please like, share, and subscribe my video, guys. So here's here's my thinking. All right, I I I'm loving this, right? I love it. I love too it so much. So, so e cute. if we could get past the sort of idea that it's would be shaming to their culture or language or anything else, this is perfect healthcare messaging. Yeah. Do you understand? This is oh. how you this is how you get through the bullshit yeah. of people not wearing to wear masks or social distance. Just show them this. It's adorable. It's all you narrative, character, 
humor. Mm -hmm. That's how you, this is what I've been screaming about with the public health and stuff. Right. Like, <laughs> that's what you're supposed to be doing, assholes. You're supposed to make people break down their defenses so yeah. they cooperate with the proper health behaviors. Yeah. This would... You would, move a, you would move 100,000 people I in the state know. of California like that. I know. If they aired this on television, like during the Super Bowl, yes. everybody would be like, be, all right, I got to put them in. You'd put it on in your yeah. house. Yeah, those little guys in the rice paddies. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's fantastic. Yeah. It's oh, my so God. It's so great. They're so cute. I, I just thought I it. really want this to go out as a health care. <laughs> no. Oh, shit. I love How the do translations. We do it? Too. I know. How do we do it without them being, you know, look like it's culturally shaming yes i don't yeah because that's not the point the point is that they're, they're doing the best they can and it's funny yeah that's it <laughs> that's it if i tried to speak whatever their what do you think their language i don't is? know maybe um, i don't know what are they filipino from. or they maybe tagalog or, or maybe korean right are they filipino any you're half filipino. do we know where it's coming from aren't you maybe. It, it, if i, I try know. whichever no, uh, or tagali or or uh what did I say? Korean. If I were speaking either of those two languages, oh, I would look like that too. I would yeah. look. I would look worse. Believe me. I, even if they phonetically spelled everything out for me, that's what I would look like. And so what? I so know. what? It'd be hysterical. I know. It's so great. <sighs> well, there, ladies and gentlemen, is how healthcare should be. I know. Healthcare, public health should be done. You don't um, want some staunchy doctor. I know at Cedars. We, listen, we, dude, we know this. This is my. This is why I'm also uh, upset all the time. This uh, my dad in my head. Yeah which I told you about last show, is that um, during the AIDS epidemic, the reason I did Love Line is because that was a healthcare messaging show. Yep. Humor, narrative, somebody would call in, a relatable character, the caller, with a narrative, and then humor. And you would deliver the messages about proper health behavior in that context. And then, lo and behold, they studied it, trying to figure out how to get people to change their behavior on HIV and AIDS, and they discovered the best way to change people's behavior is... Humor number one, narrative number two, relatable characters number three. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what sells everything. That's good advertising. That's good stand up. That's, that's good, good everything. Yeah, it's yeah. storytelling. Uh -huh. um, like when um, my husband was in the hospital, they had these funny slogans. So that Tom got hurt? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they have these great slogans for the nurses when they're doing their rounds with the doctors, you know, like wash your hands to keep it plans or whatever. The, I don't know. I can't remember them at the time, but, but I was like, oh, that's good marketing. Like yeah. they have these little slogans, slogans around yeah. Yeah. and I'm like, that's all that is, is keeping it in your head Yes. in a good way, in a positive yes. way. Not As like opposed, you're going to die. Right. You're going to fucking if die. If you have sex with somebody and you have AIDS, <laughs> you're a murderer. <laughs> If you don't wear a mask, you're killing grandma. Yeah. What do you think because that, that Because that creates defensiveness, Immediately. Right? You go, immediately. fuck you. It, yes. it, it, it dials into people's defense. Uh, immediately. So that's humor, the, yeah. the exact opposite of what they should be doing. Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> uh, my stepfather has to go to yearly check for his prostate. Yes, everyone over 50. He gets urine and blood, PSA. First time his PSA was at four and a half. Recently went to 12. Uh -oh. Doctor ruled out any infection, and he's experiencing no symptoms. He's returning for another month and a test in a month. See if it goes down. Is there anything else that could be other than cancer? Um, yes, it could be just a very, very large prostate. Some people produce a lot of PSA. What's uh, PSA? Prostate specific antigen. Uh -huh. But he has he's looking down the barrel of a prostate biopsy, almost for sure. So uh -huh. you need to rule out the cancer because it's very common leading cause of cancer in the country, particularly around African American males, who, by the way, don't get the proper screening. And then also get more aggressive cancer when they do get it. Oh. People need to raise awareness of that. Uh, this is for you, Christina. Go ahead. The mighty peristalsis pushes the farts and the shits. Mm. But is it normal for white to come out too? We've had this question before, oh, right? Oh, yes. A uh, large bowel movement will give a little bit of white. Should I get my prostate checked? Nope. Sometimes large bowel movement will push on the um, seminal vesicles and push out some white. Good times. <laughs> uh, Brown but, makes uh, the white come down too. Yes. Brown makes white. Yes. Brown makes white. <laughs> You're so proud of yourself. Yeah, that's good. Uh, my Shane, I'm 32. Ever since I was 20, I have recurrent cellulitis of my scrotum. Cellulitis? What is like cellulitis? Cellulitis is a skin infection. Like, like when, you, when you get... People talk about it, like you get a wound, it gets red and hot, and then yep. the thing starts going up your arm. Fuck. That's it was happening. He, he, screw you, go. On his beans? He's, Wait, he's let good. me see that. I want to see what it looks like oh, on his beans. Oh, you'll love this. Ooh, ouchies. Yeah, yeah, that's Those are like the up. most severe cases, though. Yeah. Yes, and well, <laughs> and that's how you get the. Um, uh, what is the name of the gangrene? Just look up scrotum gangrene. <laughs> <laughs> oh they, it's my a, god. It's, well, we did this yeah. once. Maybe you weren't on the show. 
Um, it's called, let's see what it's called. Four, four Years Gangrene. So look up Four Years Gangrene. Four Years Gangrene. There, uh, there we go. And how do you get this? And, Scratching um, your nuts too much? Apparently, uh, Mr. Weinstein had Four Years Gangrene Shut the fuck and up. had to have the surgery to repair that, which is why all the women were able to identify that particular deformity. Shut up. Interesting. Do you think it's the evil that made him have that? I No, do I don't think? think evil, because otherwise all the evil men in the world would have Four Years Gangrene. <laughs> Sometimes very nice men get four years gangrene, but it's a pretty nasty thing. Uh, so, and this, our caller, our, our uh, <laughs> emailer here, um, could get into that situation. The biggest my balls ever got was the size of a honeydew melon. Whoa. After seeing many physicians and specialists, they figured out I have a cyst in my scrotum, but the urologist said they were too small to remove. Is there anything else can be done? Or will my staff continue to do this? Um, this isn't making sense to me. Don't be stingy. Keep behind tight. Um, I'm not quite sure what's going on there because a small cyst wouldn't make your scrotum swell up to be a melon. Maybe they're intermittently small or something. I, too, I don't have enough information there. I'm sorry about that. Size of a melon. Uh, yes. Did you ever use the, 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 <laughs> do you ever remember that cartoon with that kid that would uh, could turn into anything? Well, he'd go size of a tiger, and he just become a tiger. Sounds familiar. Size of a tiger. Let's see Size of a tiger. What show. what era? Oh, sixties. Oh, okay. <laughs> so seventies maybe. I feel uh, like that was a good time for animation. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you guys doesn't. had cool. Uh, it was really uh, so primitive as to be horrific. I mean, it was cool because Mighty Mouse came from there. I know that's your fetish. I love Mighty but uh, anything by Hanna Barbera was so. I primitive. loved Hanna Barbera. So primitive. I know they're like, they're precursor to like uh, everything. Hanna Barbera cartoons. That's what you were talking about in the last episode. That girl was from Hanna. No? Yes, that was Hanna Barbera. Google Hanna Barbera. Oh boy, uh, those it's are everything. cartoons are it's so Yogi good. It's Yogi Bear. It's Huckleberry yeah. Hound. It's everything. Hanna Barbera. There you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Look at all dude. That. With Flintstones. Flintstones. And it was all Huckleberry Hound. Uh, yep. It was all shit. Let's be fair. Oh, I like I like the Pink Panther. Was that? I'm not sure that was. That was him. in that one. Yeah, there he is. He's in that one. Is he? Okay. Hanna Barbera. Yeah. Well, I think Yogi they did Bear. him eventually. Jetsons. Hey, boo -boo. Jetsons. Jetsons were dope. Uh, oh, I see uh, Johnny Quest in there. Huckleberry Hound. Top Cat. You guys, if you guys are old enough to all these things. Uh, oh, maybe that's not the Pink Panther. Maybe it's that's Top Snaggle Cat. Puss. That's Snagglepuss. Oh, Snagglepuss. Because yeah, they different. looked alike when yeah. I was a kid. Oh my God, Secret Squirrel. Jesus Christ. Jeez, good stuff, uh, dude. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that was all uh, that was all we had for entertainment as a kid. It was, you know, Pixie and Dixie and yeah. Jinxie the cat. Jinxie. Terrible. When you actually yeah. watch them now, our, our kids literally are just like, how did you? How did you <laughs> but I do this? like um, Dr. Seuss stuff. I, I make my kids watch the old school Grinch from the 60s. I yeah. think that one's quality. Yeah, yeah. I like the Peanuts. That's yeah. 60s, yeah? Yeah, yeah. That's all good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I like agree. That 60s, one. 70s. Th those do you're right those had those were sort of more parables than they were car you know little saturday well, morning cartoons you know yeah i'll tell you man the the, the charlie brown thanksgiving special yeah they really explain stuff to kids mm -hmm. they do not molly coddle and spoon feed they're like and then there was a great plague and everybody <laughs> died <laughs> except for these five people and then they celebrate they're like damn dude they don't pussy fight around the bible man yeah all right more tiktoks i want to do some videos today here we go let's do it Hey mom, do you know what she they pronouns are? I think so. Are they often used by people who identify as demigirl? Yeah, although you don't no. have to identify as demigirl since pronouns don't always equal gender. Oh, that's right. I'm still learning that. Why do you ask about she they pronouns? Well, I've actually been considering using she they pronouns for myself. Oh wow, that's interesting. Did you just decide that recently? No, I've been considering them for a while actually. Oh, that's funny. That's actually more surprising to me than you being gay. But there's one thing I don't understand about she they pronouns. What is it? <laughs> won't a lot of people just take the easy route and call you she, her? Yeah, that's one of my concerns is that people just won't use my they, them pronouns, but it would make me a lot happier if they did. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, is parenting getting way harder? Yes, because these are, this is a video like to help people talk to their teenagers. That's what the, that's what the conceit is. It, oh. it seems very high-handed and self-righteous, though, to be just that, right? Yeah. I, I, w I would rather than you getting specific scripts about, I don't know, honey, with, I would prefer the... Blah, 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 blah. Just like, let, let your kids talk, be open to them, listen. Learn how to listen. Yeah, oh, that's learn, learn true. The scripting feels a little Oof. silly. It feels... It, it, I, I, as a way of understanding the topic, fine. But to take this as parenting advice is no. <laughs> no. But she said, hold on, pronouns don't denote gender. 
I they thought don't. I thought pronouns describe gender. I'm so confused <laughs> I'm now. So confused. I how oh, fuck? Because I know that sex <sighs> and gender are different, but I thought the pronouns described your gender identification. And now, I guess it could be also <sighs> other than gender how you feel. Oh, God. I mean, if you feel like more than one person inside, which I would argue is not what we call psychologically pristine, but yeah. if you feel that way, okay. Uh, or maybe it's uh, how you feel about an object the way um, le papier <laughs> is okay. la plume. Well, well, here's what I heard. Okay, Elliot Page, formerly Ellen Page, right? El Ellen Page? Yep. Became Elliot Page. Okay. She, she is... I'm sorry, he is now Elliot. Okay. Page. I'm listening. He said that he wants his pronouns to be he and they. Okay. So that's confusing a little bit to me because I'm like, okay, I get that he's a he. So what are you, a he or a they? I don't understand now. Like, do you uh, know what I'm saying? Like, yes. either you're a he or a they. How about he, maybe maybe either go, either a, a work? Either, either. Oh, that's what that means. Gotcha. Does it? Does it? I don't so know. So it's, it's, sorry. So it's he and or they. If you're looking at it as a logical. I would think. And or, not yeah. either. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. That's all I had to know. Treacherous. It's so hard being a teenager right now. There's so many things like. Could you imagine you and your goth self? Oh my God. Having all this stuff to get into? Dude, I. Like the where? goth thing was heavy enough where I had to be like, okay, I'm a goth, but like, I'm an old school goth. Okay. Like I don't shop at Hot Topic. I'm not like a weekender goth. I'm not like, you'd have to explain like why the cure and Bauhaus is superior to Nine Inch Nails or something. Like we had the same stupidity. You had the same stuff in terms yeah. of, in terms of qualifying your identity yeah, around the these topics. Yes. Yeah. It's just, you didn't, it didn't circle around the issue of gender. Yes. It circled around culture and clothing and 100%. nail polish and music. Yep. yep, yep, yep. And sort of music is gone now, really. Music does not really affect it, it seems like, right? I know. I know. Now yeah. it's the it's this stuff, I guess. It's interesting. <laughs> it's just interesting. Right. Times they are changing, kids. Next TikTok. <laughs> hey mom. In fifteen <laughs> seconds we're gonna tell you why we're lonely as shit. One, uh -huh. we don't wear face diapers. Two, <laughs> I will not get the flu shot or the Rona vaccine. And three, three we, we voted, voted for Big Daddy, Daddy Don, Don, which takes away most of our female friends' options. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> Next. <laughs> I know. What are we going to do with that? Nothing. It's, just a, it's just a gift. Yes. Thank you for that. You got it. <laughs> uh -oh. Bro, these jizz oh. is wild, bro. <gasps> What the fuck? Hey, oh, bro, in Ocala, every single time I come out, there's always some crazy shit going on. Why are you sitting in your house? Oh my. Why is he sitting there talking about it? Why is he running out there with a ladder? Because he says these these jits. I don't know what that means, but it sounds like he's seen them do this before. So he's like, I'm going to get a camera. <laughs> and what? like the parents must know that these kids are on the, the roof. Is, does it keep going? <laughs> that's it that's oh. the beauty of tiktok we only get a fraction of the story and then you're left to <laughs> that's not your kids is it no i don't, know. I don't let well, them go that wild do stuff Whatever. reckless but not crazy okay all right what else you get that there? was pretty dope though right <laughs> oh this guy's the oh, best I'm coming, bitch. you gotta watch him he's my favorite oh I'm fucking <laughs> did you see that bitch <laughs> Was that this, really his voice? Her yes, voice or their voice? Or? This is my new favorite on the talk. What's, can I read? I can't read the name. What does it say? Aaron. The, Aaron, Aaron uh, Tichenner. Dude, this dude puts out the best talks. Is, is it a he's, dude? Yeah, yeah, but he okay. just wear, dresses up okay. like this. He's going to be the next big thing. Mark my words. Dogface420. I called that guy first. This one's going to be next. This bitch has so much talent and flair. Like... She'll dress up or he'll dress up and then go to like the yarn store and be like, did you see that bitch? <laughs> and like put on a show. This this guy's rad. Is there more coming for him or them? Mm, I'll, I'll put some more in okay. the catalog, but I just discovered him at this point. You sure it's a him? Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a man. Yeah. Okay. Mm, right. He just wears makeup. Does he like, get outfits. into the whole pronoun thing or? No, 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 no. Okay. He's, he's old school. Oh, he's right. like Gen X. Oh, okay. Non-binary. We don't, we don't fuck with pronouns. Okay. So got so. it. We're like, none of your business. Do I identify as a dominant? Yes. If you play with my hair while I'm laying on your lap, am I going to go from daddy to baby real quick? Oh, also, yes. 
Oh boy. Yeah, I, 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 no, you know, no harsh intention, but I get this weird nausea feeling when I hear. It. I've seen this before. <laughs> no, judgment. Just, no, no judgment. No judgment. No judgment. Oh, yeah. I just my stomach gets upset. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I just. Me I, too. I feel, and as usual, I feel bad for people. Right? This is my your mom's house experience. Oh right. Watching videos and you're, I know you have to be reminded of that yeah. <laughs> that any would feel bad at people getting injured or suffering or anything, but. I do feel bad at some of this. But it, I wouldn't feel bad for this gentleman because... Hey, he's into it. It's whatever. Yeah, and he's... It's, it's much like the bug scratch, squishing, whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever. He's out, dude. Like, he isn't... A, <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it comes from a place of, <laughs> of pain and not joy. I'm just saying. Oh, you think so? I think it's I, a place of joy because he's I, like, I am a dominant, but if you scratch my head, I'm going to put in a passy and be a padded pup or whatever the fuck is on he's his shirt. Like Dom also? Yeah, that's what he said. He's like, yeah. I am Dom, but I'm also a baby. I think it's weird, but here's the thing that I think makes you feel... <laughs> Polar bears don't do this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, like, no. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is the wire. Ferrets wires. don't do this. No. I, I, this is human. I, I, but like, I think it's because it's associated with ch children, especially baby stuff. And babies are innocent and asexual. Like not, you know what I mean? Like they, why that grosses me out? Yeah, of course it should. No, like, it's, it's not a, even that. It's not oh. that. It's it's that being that helpless. I just know that it comes from a place of pain. It just does. It just oh, has that's to. what oaks you out. What oaks me out is that like my two year old loves his passy too right and i'm like that guy's got a full beard yeah and like and it's also a little record scratch stuff right and ejaculates and yes like, <laughs> thank you for going there yeah yeah, yeah. Give me another TikTok. i guess it's weird to mix wanna... those two times so, like to conflate those two eras is really interesting like that helpless baby era with what gets your dick hard like, yes that's so weird yes dude. that is like... not that's not uh, make me happy to think about those two things <laughs> Oh, well, it makes and, me curious. And yet, to be fair, <laughs> normal men go that direction a little bit with their mouth, with breasts. That's what I'm... Okay. Yeah. They already go a little bit that way, don't we? So that's... that's And I, I've asked my shrink about this. I'm yeah. like, well, isn't that kind of weird and warped that men become obsessed with breasts as adults, but it's really just a food source as an infant. And I know, but it becomes identified with a... One of the yeah. things that uh, transgender females to male will tell me is right they're, they're getting yep. testosterone yep, yep, yep. we'll say like like chaz bono said this to me he said um, i love chaz I he's do too. so hot i know he said um you know first thing i noticed was that testosterone made how did he say it M made boobs eye glue from made, made boobs glue for my eyes right like right. i yeah, couldn't I've heard him say like that. i could funny. not look at boobs yeah 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 and before he had no feeling about it and now the testosterone turned on something where that was a Vis a right. visual thing he had to be looking at all the time. And, right. and I can tell you males go there. That's well, Of course, but it's interesting because it's no longer associated with mo mother's milk. No, it's a sexual, any any secondary sexual characteristic males are into, whether it's how hip fat is distributed or butts or legs. It's all, we're all yeah. paying attention to all that boners, stuff. Boners, boners, <laughs> boners, 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 boners. <laughs> so weird. And I just think it's interesting. Like, but how does it? I guess develop. You're gonna have a house full of them. It's gonna be so I have good. So many boners. Oh, it's so much jizz. So... But like, because uh, I guess it goes from mother's breath. My my shrink was explaining like in your developmental steps. Like you you push down that part of you that was mommy's tits, and then you you become a sexualized being right around adolescence, and then yes. you suppress the mom stuff, and then you go. Yes, yeah, to... I mean that's sort of a psychological model for that. But the reality right. is the hormones just turn all dial, that on and dial. just dial in that desire around tits, these tits, these tits, motivational tits. visual cues and that's it it's it's on right and but they are just it. feeding and mechanisms i understand They're you not... keep going there but for the male is not a concern about the milk oh. there's no concern about the milk it's all it's all something to do i mean you know the idea is also your shrink will tell you that we're trying to get satisfaction through general genital stimulation as opposed to oral stimulation, which is right. more primitive, and right. yet we'll bring the oral in, you know, as part of the whole deal. Yeah, you're infants. Yeah. It's the same. Yeah, yeah infants, but the, you're just those... little tiny babies no. with little passies and beards. <laughs> but, but to some extent, all those primitive motivations are all there. Yeah, you know, all, they they're tied in with the earlier stuff, right? <laughs> it's I'm all just... survival, reproduction, feeding, but but all kind of God. the same part of the brain. I would love it if you were into like 
baby diaper wearing. If me personally, yeah. if I were into it. I would love it. Why? I don't know. Like, I want to know about it. I want oh, so to I like, could tell you all about yeah, it. Yeah. Like, but what I'd be wearing and hearing and shitting myself. Yeah. To really make it. I would fun. fucking that, love that. <laughs> so you want me to put a diaper on and shit myself? During yeah. The show? And I'd be like, are you Christina, peeing right I, now? I, I'm like, yeah. I would do almost anything to make you happy. You know that? <laughs> oh, yeah, and, so, and so it's actually something I'll consider. I, no. Not shitting myself, but certainly <laughs> peeing during the show in a diaper. If that would make you happy. <laughs> Christina, I would think about it. Maybe Stop for your it. birthday or something. <laughs> As an adult, male. <laughs> As an adult. For your, I mean, for your birthday, maybe. Oh Christmas, my god! Could up. you imagine? Like Tom could not use a bedpan because he's like, I yeah. haven't shit in my bed since I, I was like two. <laughs> I can't do this. Like everything no, you've been programmed is to not yeah, your shit in your bed. Yeah. But as I said, for you, for, <laughs> oh, I'm really you know, honored. I, I could overcome all of that. Like, put on the diaper, <laughs> roll up some pants. Really. And then just sit here and go, Christina. I just I, I pee. <laughs> but then you have to be like, and I'm so hard. I've, oh, then I couldn't I, pee. Then I'm like, oh, but no, no, after you, your knee, and then the wet die die, I think, is what gives men uh, the oh, right. I don't Isn't know. Isn't that what just, it is? My brain doesn't go that way, but thank you for pointing that out to me. Uh, <laughs> like, I'm and this so is only for queens above on. 18, mind you. Queens above 18 only. <laughs> well, welcome here. And so, <laughs> so, so the wet diaper is what causes the I stimulation. I think so. I think it's like, I you'll, need to You'll be excuse me, but that doesn't sound stimulating. <laughs> that must be a lot for you to take in but it, i didn't find that stimulating. <laughs> like but i'll try for you christina i will I really for your birthday <laughs> i don't know why it makes me laugh so hard to like i always picture like tommy in a diaper well, and like what if he shit in his diaper <laughs> and it was like he's like okay mommy clean it and then i have to come and like because you know how you do it with your baby you just I'm had like, that ex Ugh. you just did oh, that know, in the, the hospital what are you so talking horrible. about? It's the reality is far different than the fantasy. But the fact that you have a fantasy that goes all the way there is a, quite a tell. <laughs> but okay, okay. It's not a sexual fantasy. No, of course it's not. It's just no, a psychological. No. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Just changing him, put him on the table, yeah. and I powder his nuts, and I take the wipes. Could you even imagine how disgusting that would be? Like to diaper him like an infant. You, oh my you would, God. You, at the end, you'd have a paper mache outline of his oh. genitalia from all the powder. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching him dump was bad, and like, oh, it was so it was so sad. Tom is suffering. Please, Tom. Oh, You're gosh. having fun at his expense, but yeah. again, for my queens above eighteen, and for you, Christina. <laughs> but if, only if, above if, eighteen. If, if if it really would make you happy, I mean, I I'd be willing to. Really? Do I I guess. I mean, I. You'd sit in a diaper and pee in at once during the show. The, just the delight it gives you. you the delight that. it gives you is so such a joy for me. You that, guys know what to do. Buy adult diapers for the it. next episode. Holy mm. shit! It's happening. That is it fast? really happening? I, I said I'd be willing to. I'm uh, going to. No, no, no. no. We have it in ink. It's carved in stone. Uh, we got you, <laughs> homie. You're you're doing it. You're contractually obligated. Mm. We can both try it. I'll try it. I don't think I would like it though. Just sit. I know I wouldn't like it. I, I, it would be. <laughs> Do you want to try it? Let's try it on the next episode. <laughs> I'll try it with you. Cause I always have to pee a lot cause I drink coffee and water. This runs so <laughs> afoul of the rational revolution. You understand? <laughs> this runs afoul. Of what we've been trying to do all this time. But part of the rational revolution <laughs> is to explore, explore I know. thoughts that are I, not I, I get it. silly or yeah, maybe not PC. Yes, yes. But that exploration is <laughs> happening right now. But that doesn't necessarily mean ex experiencing those things. But... Oh, you know what? what? I tried. How are you thinking about it? I'm like, I could totally... I was like, if I'm wearing the diaper, then I wouldn't have to get up and pee so much. Yeah, I know. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> podcast for hours we could do a, some sort of weird uh, <laughs> marathon where we just wore a diaper and pee that we, at least we feel reason for having the diaper on like a telethon right <sighs> okay why does that make you so happy because it's so wrong oh, it's i think wrong. it's just weird i just laugh at the the stuff that amuses me is the far out like oh my god i could never do that maybe could i, I do well that? Sp speaking <laughs> i don't know i like far out S speaking of that um should I like wear a white hose coat and have a stethoscope and then sit here peeing in my? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be so much weirder. And that's your fetish. You're like, I'm Doctor Pee's a lot or Doctor Pee Pee. That's so weird. They just call me Doctor P. Doctor Pee Pee. I don't know, man. Maybe wow. I, you know what it is, Drew. I'm it, so it, repressed. I'm so. I guess like I'm so repressed. I don't have these proclivities. 
So I'm always like interested in other people's wild shit because I'm I must be I, just I, so I repressed. I get that. I get it. But yeah. I love you, and I've never gone down this path with <laughs> anyone before. Really? So, never. Really? And so it's <laughs> I I wouldn't call you repressed. Oh, okay. Because a repressed person Wouldn't doesn't even. think about these things and doesn't really <laughs> go down these paths. And I guess I'm repressed because I've never really gone down this path with anybody ever you, before. You've never had a co-host But because talk about I love you <laughs> and I'm willing to go with you, I'm having this conversation oh my God. about sitting in a diaper and wetting myself. <laughs> Let's do it next time. Well, I'll do it with you. I'll do it with you. Let's just try it. We'll do it but at the I'm very end. At the very end, I'm we'll pee in the diaper. I'm wondering. I just want to know what it feels like. It's been so long. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> like I changed so many diapers in my house. Like I've forgotten the joy. Doesn't that of make just... you aversive to it? You're I'm identifying so... with your too strong of your children. I'm like but so what... in. But here's my thing, the though. World. What else is going on in that <sighs> noggin of yours? What else? Insanity. What else is happening? Can there? I tell you something? We just went down a strange path. So it's always, tell me something. I'll tell, tell you something. something. I was walk when I was like I was walking through the hospital and I over, I, I listen to people's conversations. I see like the pictures of doctors and I actually had this thought. I thought, oh my god, I wouldn't last like five minutes in an environment where I had to hold my shit together and be normal, because I'm so programmed to just like to be weirdo. You know what I mean? I could not. I could not have a regular job now. <laughs> this is it. I I, I so, can't I can't go back. So you're taking me back. there with you is what we're saying yeah, here. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah. the uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, what <laughs> next up? Our friends at Bespoke Post. They've done it again this winter with an all new lineup of essential box of awesome collections for guys, guaranteed to upgrade your life. So whether it is showcasing pieces to level up your indoor hosting skills or cozy threads for those blustery days, that's the part that I've gotten into lately is the the winter the winter uh, blustery day blankets. Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has collections for every part of your life. You've heard me talk about it before, the travel gear, the barbecue gear. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers them help them dial in exactly what your Box of Awesome will be for your specific needs. They release new boxes every month across a ton of categories. Free to sign up. You can skip a month or cancel any time. Each box, only $45, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. To get 20% off your first monthly box, you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Dr. Drew at checkout. Again, 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com. Enter the code Dr. Drew, boxofawesome.com, code Dr. Drew for 20% off your first box. Next up is our friends at Liquid IV. Hydration is something people do not pay enough attention to. I, gentlemen, I'm having a colonoscopy next week and I'm going to use Liquid IV to stay hydrated. People think water is enough. It's not enough. In fact, you have to have something in the water. It's called solute to maintain blood volume. And whatever your holiday plans are, it's you can use uh, hydration products out for the long trips for, uh, I, I know I, after a big meal, I'm pretty thirsty and it's not just water I need. And of course, flu season is upon us. So if you're having any of the flu type phenomenon, whether it's GI or sore throat, uh, staying hydrated. That's why we put people on IVs to keep them hydrated. So what I like most, so it comes in three delicious flavors, contains five essential vitamins, healthier than the sugary sports drink, and it's the optimal ratio of glucose, sodium, and potassium, as well as, of course, water and other nutrients to maintain blood volume. The company has also donated over 6.7 million servings globally. Hydration is a major issue around the globe, and they are doing something about it. Liquid IV is available nationwide at Walmart in the beverage section, or you can get 25% off when you go to liquidiv.com. Use code Dr. Drew at checkout. Again, that is 25% off anything you order when you use the promo code Dr. Drew at liquidiv.com. Get better hydration today at liquidiv.com, promo code Dr. Drew. And next up, our friends at stamps.com. Holiday season, everybody. I've told you forever, anything you can do at the post office, you can do with stamps.com. And do you want to go line up at the post office in this busy holiday season? Expose yourself maybe unnecessarily? 
why you can do it all from the convenience of your home or office again with stamps.com anything you can do at the post office you can do with just a few clicks stamps.com brings the services of the u.s postal service to your computer stamps.com is a must-have for any business simply use your computer to print official u.s postage 24 7 for any letter any package any class of mail anywhere you want to send it once the mail is ready just schedule a pickup we didn't just use it in our business. We used it in our home as well. And with stamps.com, you get five cents off every first class stamp, up to 40% off priority mail, and 62% off UPS shipping. It is a no-brainer. Save time, save money. No wonder over 900,000 small businesses already use stamps.com. Do not spend a minute of your holiday season at the post office this year. Sign up for stamps.com instead. There is no risk. With my promo code, Dr. Drew, you get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. And of course, that scale you plug into your computer and determine exactly the right amount of postage for any class of mail, any package, any envelope. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, type in Dr. Drew, that is stamps.com, enter D-R-D-R-E-W, stamps.com, never go to the post office again. What else is going on in there? Just, just, you know, just, <laughs> just, just, just wondering. Okay, I had, oh, I'll tell you, so okay. you talked about Trisha Paytas. Yeah. I had a I had a sexual dream with her ah, this oh, morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, today. Yeah, I think it was this mm -hmm. morning where mm -hmm. she was boning some dude. She her, was. Yeah, not uh -huh. me. Was it? Am I her? Are, are we? Well, she said something very interesting to me, and I thought quite accurate. Christina. Oh, what? I thought you thought I thought you meant like she reminded you of me. No, no, she, she does not. Me. But okay. but she said something really interesting and really accurate as it pertains to some of the stuff we've been talking about with identity and things. Yeah. She said she goes. I've always thought of myself. I said I said because she exaggerates her femininity. Yeah. I, I said, look, you're like a female, female crossdresser. Oh my God, totes. Right. So male crossdressers dress just like she does. Yeah. But she just happens to be a female. And she goes, absolutely. I've always felt like that. And I feel like my sexuality is gay man. Yes, she, I feel like yes. a gay man who is a drag queen. Oh, That's what wow. she said. And I thought, wow, that is a very insightful and very accurate, I thought, way of sort of describing what was happening with her. That's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've always felt more masculine. And in fact, I was just remembering it, uh, my mother would, um, it was very chic in the 80s <clears throat> to wear suits, right? Like yeah. those you know, Chanel or like these, she yeah. say, it's very chic. Yeah. It's very chic. And I You're remember. Sort of, there was sort of like a coat. A coat gorgeous. Coat, these coat, wonderfully yeah. slim suits. Yeah. And I remember even in college, I dressed, I loved dressing more masculine, like androgynous. And I was like, oh God, I wonder if I am a non-binary. Maybe it, I have something will, in there. Uh, the, the, um, that all started, I think, back in the 70s. Yeah. I remember my buddy Christina Ferrari as the Virginia Slims. Look at the Virginia Christina Slims. Ferrari sounds familiar. She's a famous. She I, she and I had a talk show for a little while. Oh, she was a famous I host. Her. She would do, do Good Day LA with Steve Edwards for a long yes, time. Yes, she's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember but, her. But do her look her. No, no, no. Virgi Christina Ferrari. Ferrari. Christina Ferrari. Virginia Slims. Christina Ferrari. There was something. There was some more acceptable yeah. thing about women being looking more there, masculine there and androgynous. There and That's right. Oh, yeah. she's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, go, go up. Let's find the Virginia Slims. Because I know there was a Virginia Slims. There, there, there. The yes. right, the right. Yes, See? that was the look. Yeah, that's sort of the thing there. Yeah. And that's how I love to. Even now, I wear blazers every now and then, and I, I love that because it is a masculine thing. I think I love masculinity. I really do. Which is why you sort of noticed us shaming I'm, ourselves. I'm in a male. I'm I'm a woman trapped in a man's body. I mean, I'm a man trapped in a woman's body. Is that what I am? No. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's interesting that you that masculine part you value. Yes. Okay. And that and you've always liked your dad, even though you say he's a shithead. Yeah. You, you, you really do kind of like him. He makes me laugh. Yeah. Yeah. He's amusing. yeah. And your mom was a pain in the ass. Yeah. So it made it hard to amusing. identify with that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And, and yes. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. that whole thing. Yeah. 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 There's yeah. a lot of thoughts I have, Drew. Don't you have an, a running internal monologue that's I just. I do, nutty? but it usually doesn't involve diapers and pissing mm -hmm. myself. <laughs> usually. Like, hey, when you go to Starbucks, just tell me this, and you're you're six feet away and you're waiting for your drink you don't silently judge everybody i do not what do you do check my phone oh fuck yeah. really yeah because i'll go through my head and i'll be like i'll be like oh, i wonder if that guy's hot under his mask like he's not 
and then I'll be like, I wonder if like, oh, that's the nurse that they're probably banging. They're totally banging. And I wonder who's banging in that group of people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no. if, if I were single. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. So keep going. And I was thinking, okay. And I was like, because I was at the hospital a lot. And I was like, if, if I were a single woman, I would just hang out in the hospital. Why? Hot, young doctors, bro. And these are guys who are, remember we talked about competency being attractive? Yes, yes, yeah. And I would see these guys, I'm like, dude, yeah. this is like, this yeah. is good quality dudes. Like, I would get a job as like a cashier mm. and I would be like, hey, what's up? I'm Christina, you know? And, and I would talk to all the young residents. Right. That's what they're yeah. called when they're younger. Yeah, it's better not to be a nurse. Not the nurse, because yeah, then he won't fuck you. Colleagues. But he'll fuck the cashier right. at the cafeteria. That's true, you're right. So I was thinking you about- You were diabolical. Yeah. <laughs> Which job would I get in the hospital yeah. to snag a doctor husband. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's the stuff that goes on. Like, how would I get there? How old are you now? <laughs> I'm, I'm old. So I'm 44. I'm happily married. Yeah. But I was like, dude, if if I had any advice to young girls watching, go hang out at the hospitals no, after COVID's over. Don't but do that. Find a man there. D Fuck do, these go, apps. Go, go become a doctor. Oh yeah, you okay. can do that too. <laughs> 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 but I will say. <laughs> it's a lot easier when your husband is a, is an earner. Uh, it's a lot you're easier. You're an earner too. You I am, but I, I like to be home with the kids now. So I'm in that stage where I'm like, you you do. Uh, <laughs> I just want to be home with my babies, you know? That, that by the way, that whole motivational system that makes you feel that way, yeah. no one ever talks about that. No, because it's, it's completely antithetical to feminism. Yes. And the feminists and, never addressed you, you, motherhood. If, That's if you the don't problem. address these motivational systems, they will get you. You know what I mean? You have to prepare yeah. for them, figure out what to do with them. And I think it's a fucking, them. listen, this is a bullshit that women can have everything. You can have everything not at the same time. Correct. And we have to figure out how to help them do that. I agree. And, and, but to pretend that everything, you, you know, the, if all the different pieces, some of them don't exist. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like to deny certain parts is how you get into discomfort, how you're, how you're painful. How you, you, get, you get stressed out. A yeah. lot of these w mothers are working mothers are all stressed out because they're working their full-time jobs, trying to run well, home in time to say goodnight to the baby and the right. nanny. And then and they da, feel da, 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 guilty da, da, da. Yeah, and they feel bad and they miss their baby and blah, 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 blah. It's and, too much for And then anything. they're angry at the husband because he doesn't really feel that way, but he wants to be around the kid but doesn't have that same drive, that same desire. Tom thing. does not want to be around the kids the way Not I do. the same way. No, I know. It's, and, it's not, and it's not a learned behavior, but I'm sorry. It just isn't just isn't. I think the fear is that we're going to say that sex roles are somehow essential. And that's that's the uh that's what's really antithetical to this generation, right? If you say yeah, that something's innate, oh god forbid that that's yeah, an innate here's trait. Here's the problem, innate traits if you don't manage them, they get the better of you. Yeah. You don't have to cave to innate traits, but to pretend they're not there and ignore them, that's really they'll find a way, yeah, yeah, they'll find a way into your Motive, into your behavior. into wearing yeah. a diaper in a pass. You know, when you wake up, you'll be sitting with your partner across from her wearing a diaper, pissing yourself. I am so proud. I, like I'm so blown away. Like the fact that you would wear a diaper for me, it really means a lot. Like, I, I bet the fact that we even had this conversation is kind of interesting. So I mean, when I was a young girl listening to K Rock, yes, and then you saw me in celebrity rehab, and you thought that guy. <sighs> That kind of needs to put a diaper and on. And then who would have thought as an adult I would get to have this dialogue with you? Yeah, it's I, like a I dream. Was, it's funny, I was, it's <laughs> funny you would bring that up because while we were having this conversation about me wearing a diaper and peeing myself, <laughs> I was thinking, I remember Christina used to have admire me. I and still do. Like, like the skills I had as a physician <laughs> and used to ex express certain degree of respect. And, and, and <laughs> Gone. Now you're in the fold. No, I respect you tremendously. Big time in the fold. Big So educated. Time. And it's, it's a slow cooking of the frog, ladies and gentlemen. It's, it, it's, it goes slow. And then Can all I... of a sudden you're sitting in a diaper you're hanging <laughs> yourself. <laughs> and that's your studio yeah, jeans. Yeah. <laughs> but I do respect Woo. it and I respect your... Um, um, you really <laughs> made me see the medical profession and medicine differently. Oh, I good. think I was afraid so much of the hospital, afraid of doctors, afraid of medicine, Why? afraid of illness, hmm. because it's not like you forget you're in it. As mm. a lay person, you don't, you don't think well, of afraid it. of illness, I get, but afraid of caretakers is like, mm, why? Oh, because you're like, they could find something. I could oh. have cancer. I could have well, this so wrong. You're, so that's an association, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're allowing your fear of me finding something bleed over to being afraid of me. Yeah. 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 Right. Or uh, doctors in general. But the whole point is like, hey, they can find a solution or they can try to solve. It's yeah. problem solving medicine. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More so than like you guys aren't these om omniscient, no. omnipotent gods. No, we, but we've, we've made that very clear today. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've sort of 
pointed that out in a big way. But I think growing up... Not all of them are willing to sit here in a diaper <laughs> on your behalf, mind you. But you've pointed out uh, that there's... Yes, the, 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 how the mighty have fallen. Yeah. <laughs> But I think I thought of doctors as that growing up, especially, you know, in my, in my house, like my mother would be like, you have to get dressed up. You're going to the doctor. Oh yeah. There's something Euro European stuff. That's all yeah. European stuff. But now you've been around. Now I'm like, you guys are just dick slaps like we are. Yeah. Right? Ortho. You ran, now you've been around an ortho unit, which is just like carpentry. I love yeah. it. So you got It's some, interesting. Eh, I was being groomed to be an orthopedist yeah. because there was a, there was a time where in medicine where you're, you, if you fit a profile, they'd mm. sort of slot you in. And I was an uh, athletic male at the time, and they were like, come on with us. You're one of those guys. Come on with the ortho. And uh, That's a good point, because oh, Tom yeah. Surgeon is like a jacked. Yeah. Real, everybody in the ortho is like super ripped. Well, some of it you use because you're, you're, so you're a carpenter. You're moving, you're yeah. big, broken, breaking bones and sawing stuff and things. And um, You wanted I, to do heart stuff, you said. I did not like my patients asleep. I didn't like surgery, it's boring. Oh. Surgery is, I don't like carpentry, <laughs> so I don't like surgery. It's really that simple. Yeah. And su surgery is much more barbaric than you imagine, especially ortho. And um, oh. and it's, you know, drills and nails. You see what's in Tom's arm. Yeah. Uh, I, and uh, But it's actually very character. It's a routine humoral break. That's how that happens. But I guess because I never thought of doctors as practicing a craft. Do you understand? Like I, I That's never why we call it practice. Correct, <laughs> but I never thought of it in terms of what you just said. It's a carpenter who specializes yeah. in putting pins and things on yeah. some guy's arm to meld it together so that it comes. Yeah, That's but, but it's, but it's, work. But it's right. There's that it's piece, which is the surgeon's part, but it all comes from a fund of knowledge, right? Yeah. And and I like the brain part of it. I like the thinking part and the interpersonal part. Yeah. And, and the biochemistry. Which and people get extremely confused. This is something that drives me a little crazy. Let's get a total body scan and see what's wrong with me. Yeah. That's defining your anatomy, which tells me zero about your physiology and biochemistry, oh which is all that matters. Really? Your anatomy cares. Well, right? I don't I mean, know. You this discussion's way over. If you my have head. a tumor in there, but I'll be able to find that in a physical exam. Oh, so you Otherwise, think an MRI is pointless? Don't do it. Well, if I'm looking for a tumor and I, on exam I found evidence, I'm going to confirm it. Yeah, yeah, but to do it as a screening test, I learn more from a physical exam because I can also derive information about the physiology. Wow. Right? What's your blood pressure? What's your what's going on in the vessels in the eye? I can look at that. And so Jesus we can Christ. derive all kinds of information about what's really going on. So anyway. <sighs> How do you I touch like the, people? Like people are gross, aren't they? Don't they smell? That's <laughs> what I think about. Like their breath and like their it, it, You get sort of desensitized to that during training when you see really gross things. Yeah. Lots of it. Yeah. And you're just into your elbows with it all the barfing time. Barfing and shitting. It's, uh, it's, it's, okay. Should we, speaking of barfing and shitting, should we see some snot and Gatorade? Oh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I forgot. Oh, this one's really gross. Mm hmm Yeah, speaking of your residency. Is that what she... Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. What's he doing? He's snot rocketing into his Gatorade bottle. And then putting it... Oh, my God. Yo, that dude's a that dude is uh, cool. There's a cool guy. <laughs> that <dude is> cool. <laughs> so I actually got a whole bunch of messages on why this guy is doing this. Please tell mm. me. Um, well, apparently there's all these valuable drugs that are up his nose. Oh, and he doesn't want to waste them. Oh. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> wow, a little now. meth, a little cocaine. <laughs> good for him because the talking. meth you can take orally. It's not quite as good, oh. but. Yeah, I cocaine too. Know. Cocaine too. Get some morally in there. Good. You, you drink cocaine? Maybe even heroin. You could have some heroin up there. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Um, let me. I want you want to do that one. I don't want to see a broken arm right now. Okay. Can we do some? Uh, how about? Uh, I'm thinking the uh, Would you racist. Stop with this. I want okay, the racist. Do the chiropractor. This All one's right. good. And then you're gonna want to see. I that. want racist feminist after that. Yeah. Race, and then I want racist. <laughs> Watch this adjust. <laughs> Uh oh. <laughs> what did we just see? That was not good. No. Okay. What what's wrong with that though? We'll find out in the lawsuit that follows. But what's wrong with making the spine go? Hyper like extend that? like that? Hyper extend with that kind of force? Not not what I call a good thing. You can tear lots of things. You can tear stuff. Could you become paralyzed? Um, 
You could. I, I don't think he did that so much, but there's a lot of the ligaments and nerves and muscles that can all tear that way. Why do you think he was pleased with himself? Because he was like, yep, yeah, that's, well, that's what, we what do. he that's what he does. I, I just think that that's highly dangerous. That's all. So good do you think it could feel good? It's possible. And he, maybe this guy can call us and defend what he does. But it uh, looks very dangerous to me. Don't please I mean, don't, you can do it again. <laughs> she's all smiles. She's too. like, okay, this can't be good for you. Oh! Oh! And she's crying oh! in pain. And he's like, that, that's what I do. And she Here can't you go, stand enjoy up that. She can't feel her feet. Fuck. No, not good. But, I mean, that's how you, you know, the, those sorts of injuries, like in a car accident, right? Yeah. That's how you get in no real good. trouble. Yeah. The spine doesn't go that way. <laughs> Um, well, let's uh, get the racist feminist in oh, here. Oh, racist feminist. Yeah, and yeah. then I want the neighbor fi fight Karen. Oh, yeah. Men suck 101 garbage. Garbage sucks. Women have been men's bitches since day fucking one. Why do we have to be the niggers? We're not black. No racial slurs intended. I did not mean to offend anybody. <laughs> you have. <laughs> Uh, did you notice that left eye moving around in a lot of interesting ways? Let's go back to the beginning. I want you to keep an eye on, on the left eye relative to the sure, right. Sure, sure, sure. Here we go. Men suck 101 garbage. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Garbage sucks. What is going Women on? Women have been men's bitches she has since a, she, day she got, fucking one. She got the Why TikTok eye. Why do we eye. have to be yeah. She got the TikTok eye. Yeah, what is that? First chick with the TikTok eye. <laughs> it's a, it's the cool guy marker of the TikTok. Should we have a donkey kick her in the head to make it no, go right again? No, she has, uh, you know, amblyopia, some sort of uh, eye oh, muscle drift there. Poor lady. Yeah, she does. Have the cool, yeah. She's got the cool lighting. <laughs> yeah, she's the, got the hers, cool eyes. Hers though, she's special because normally <laughs> the normal mark of the TikTok cool guy is the eye going out. Hers went in. <laughs> That's it's good different. For her. Yeah, it's, it's good different. For her. It's a little, little bit different, but she, uh, yeah, she's offensive. I uh, wonder what the under eyes is that makeup or tired uh, drug use? What's going on here? Are you well, you're the goth. Drugs. I don't. She does have red lipstick. She could be going for kind of a gothy. That's kind of what it looks like to me. Thing. Yeah. 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 I, I don't get drugs so much. People are sort of blown up. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Karen. She's definitely got feelings. We got a Karen. Strong up. feelings and big words. Yeah, good for her. I, she's too offensive for me. Uh, Karen. There's a Karen neighbor. Oh, Karen. Yeah. That's oh. karma, bitch. That's Karen. what you get for lying in court. Karen. Batman. Karen. Oh, that's a Karen right there. Karen, that's can you a have Karen a conversation? Right you, look at you two. You don't right know how to have a conversation. Right up against the property line. You don't think that's intimidating? You try to be intimidating. You don't, you don't fucking intimidate me, fat man. This is ridiculous. You don't intimidate me, fat man, okay? You don't intimidate me, fat man. I'm trying man. to have a conversation. So mm -hmm. we were talking man, about man. repairing the fence. Uh, and she is... You don't intimidate me at all. You don't intimidate me, fat man. <laughs> don't come on my property. Get your ass back in your fucking garage. Get your ass back in your fucking garage, fat man. Get your hey. ass back in your house. No. Nobody wants to hear you. Nobody wants to hear you. Nobody I don't have that. See, I don't, I don't have, see have you that problem. Me. Close your eyes and listen. I don't have that yeah. problem. You do. You go back in the house, fat man. So what do you see when she hear, you hear her? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear about a... 14 year old oh you know what i mean yes I, it's definitely like underdeveloped like that's yeah. a, that's an a older female sounds like a out of control adolescent young adolescent you Ooh. don't intimidate me fat man right <laughs> <laughs> but i like his fence with the monkey on it what the hell's going on there that was cool what? yeah <laughs> have you ever had a fight like that with a neighbor mm. where you're screaming like that no I can't think, I don't think I have. I generally yeah. get along with my neighbors. Yeah, same. I wonder mm. like what level you have to be to get well, to that. Well, haven't we seen a bunch of TikToks and things like this when yeah. neighbors come out and threaten and do all kinds of crazy it's stuff? Wild. Yeah. It's wild. So you think yeah. it's developmental. She's stuck at 14. She's got some anger. Well, I don't, all, all I hear is that voice. <laughs> yeah. Could yeah, I, I, you imagine? I, you know, and I, 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 there's something strange about voices that they're characteristic of when your heavy traumas were, they sort of stay right there. Wow, that's yeah. so true. You know what I was thinking about too? So when I get really stressed out, my shoulders go here mm. and then like the right side of my body locks up, it goes here and wrinkles on my face. When I get Botox, it's here, this line, because right. I'm scowling. That would be, be everybody. Right, but, but I'm yeah. saying that it's interesting how your body and your face oh. is a map of your emotional uh -huh. life. Uh -huh. Like, you know, over the years, just how well, you handle the stress. Well, mm, 
I, I think we've overdone the oh boy. Tell me, we've overdone tell me. the term stress. I, I know. I, I hate I, even fucking using. Yeah, that. I think distress is a little more. I like nasty. distress. Yeah, because stress is good. Yes, I agree. It was very stressful to talk about putting a diaper on and peeing myself, but that was a very interesting experience. <sighs> Look how much yeah. joy that. Brought. And it brought you joy, and that made me happy. And so that was stressful, but I don't think it contributed to, wrink to wrinkles making in your my face, face and your body. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, this fucking COVID thing at times has been distressing. Yeah. And probably has not been great for my physiology, but you got to remember wh mm. where do feelings come from? Where is the ultimate source of a feeling? The brain? Mm -hmm. the that's where you experience. That's where you the feel them. Yes. The yes. Trauma. The the, the body, body keeps the, the score. The, the body, I know that yeah. book. That's yes. A great book. Yeah. Mr. Van Dr. Van yeah. der Kolk. Yeah. Um the the body is your the are we have all this complicated stuff going on in the body that we do not understand. Yeah. The the source of what's called interoceptive sensory information, which is feelings, gut feeling, heart, all that stuff. That those mm -hmm. are our big feelings. They they start there. And then they're sort of they're sort of fed into an emotion, which is then what we express, right? And that's different than mood, different than affect. It's just sort of feelings and emotion are sort of connected, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And like, what am I feeling? Like when you were having trouble connecting mm -hmm, to mm -hmm, your feelings, mm -hmm. weren't you having to kind of listen to your body? Yeah, what stuff? I do because sometimes I go straight to anxious, and I go, Me too. Ah, right. I'm right. overwhelmed. And then when right. I go, I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, why are you overwhelmed? What's happening? Well, it's What's not, going it's, it's, on? It's what do you feel? What do you yeah. feel? I, I used to have to, to walk back. into therapy. And I'd have to start with, okay, I'm feeling. I should yes. start with that every fucking time. Because if I didn't start with that, I'd be out of my head somewhere else. Exactly. As it opposed gets escalated. To, what are you feeling? What are the spontaneous things coming out of your body yeah. that you can rely on that are, you know, it's, if you're not connected, if you didn't have rapprochement, you know, connect up to that. Yeah. And so to get connected up to it gives you lots of information. The body, body tells the score. That's so true. If you listen, like if, for instance, if your stomach is hurting, then right. you go, oh, my stomach is bothering. Why is that happening? Right. Da, so da, 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 so da. when I think about sitting in a diaper peeing, <laughs> my stomach and my heart and my soul hurt, all of them. But to see your smiling mm -hmm. face respond to it, somehow it makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> so great. Yeah, <sighs> I um, what did I notice? Oh, my heart rate. I noticed in therapy if I talk about stuff that it if i yeah. start to my heart starts to of course. pound of course then i go oh that's like a past that's it that's that's the soft the sweet spot so to speak of mm -hmm. feelings we need to go there mm -hmm. yeah that's, so that's interesting. your body defending against it or reacting to it the way it always uh, did or something yes. and uh, you can be aware of that and then try to tune into what's behind it underneath it that's what else right. is there that kind of thing versus fighting it because what i used to do is fight it I'm not well, anxious. I'm fine. I'm fine. My heart's not pounding. I'm, I'm good. Right. You stay in the anxiety. You don't go past it because you don't know how. Yeah. I, I used to tell my therapist, like, like trying to walk before you know how to, what your legs are even. You just, you can't, you just don't yeah. do it. It's hard yeah. to do it. It's, it's a you mechanism. You have to be taught how you to do You have to be some skill at it. So. Yeah. I didn't want this show to stop. This has been an interesting oh, experience. I'm so, I feel so much better now that I was sitting here. I always like it. I'm so excited you're going to wear a diaper. <laughs> Just, we're, just that we're thinking about it. We're thinking about oh, it. Oh, now we're back to thinking about it. Well, I mean, it makes you so happy. To, it's hard for me. Well, not, very persuaded. You're I, very persuasive I have person. to pee right now and imagine the ease with which I could urinate. If, if we were going to do some sort of marathon thing, I would definitely do it. Because it would sort of make the, the re, give us a reason to do a marathon. Okay, all right. And, sure. and sort of make an extra interesting element in the Think marathon. Think about it. Think about it. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> So uh, do we have any other business? Uh, we did no voice messages. We'll oh, throw one, we do we'll one? throw one voice message let's do in one, Bubba. Female. Female please, voices please. only. We're, we're shaming men. We started this whole show is about shaming men. Did yeah. You, have you noticed? Yuck. Men are yuck. Hi, Dr. Drew. This is Samantha calling from Kentucky. And I was just wondering why penises curve to like one side or the other. Is it genetic or I don't know. Is it like from which hand you masturbate from? Anyway, love the podcast. Keep it high and tight, and better believe I'm coming up in May. <laughs> I love that new one. That's the best. Better believe I'm coming up. We didn't hear any Queens from uh, Queens Bobby. I know either. that'll come. Okay. Um, so uh, various reasons. Some of it is genetic. Some of it is environment. There's uh, there's even more severe curvatures when it, then it's called Peyronie's disease, mm -hmm. and Peyronie's mm -hmm. can be spontaneous genetic or acquired and it can be caused by injury and to some extent there may be something to do with masturbation she's right mm. um but not necessarily it's just sort of things kind of pull around a little bit and it's sort of there's a sheath around the the cavernous bodies that, that swell up make the erection and that sheath can kind of you know get plaques in it and things and it pulls it to one side or the other yeah i think i think 
I think the misconception is that dicks or vages are perfect or that they should look, it's like, I've seen so many dicks and um, the best <laughs> I'm so, ones, I'm so proud of you. they're so varied. Yeah. Every dick is, I mean, except for that one stellar one we've discussed oh, on yes, the show. What'd you call him? The perfect Peter? The perfect <laughs> Peter. And we, I still didn't, you didn't make clear to me exactly. I'll tell you, it's a, it, was, it was girthy, it was big, yeah. it was long and girth and the head was perfect like a helmet. And uh, I'm seeing, I'm telling like, and all in proportion, all in proportion, all in proportion, perfect nuts. Like it was a perfect dong, mm -hmm. but for the most part, everyone else's has been like, yeah, this guy goes this way. And then this one's shorter and fatter. And then this one had a smaller head. Like they're just variation, just like I vaginas. Think for men, the idea that women would have like a preference or find one better than the other. Of course. That's, that's where it does. Oh, why? why? It just doesn't. It just doesn't like they're all kind of the same to us. It's like, Dongs, yeah, they're and, very different. Yeah, and so to us, it's just like, wow, you have a, a, a such thing as a nice one. Do I have a nice one? Oh, <laughs> it's kind of, it's right. Kind of thing. Is just, mine nice? Because they, because they, we have no. You have what, no what way. No way of knowing. Well, I'll tell you what. The more you like somebody, the better their dong gets. How ah, about that? There you go. And that's true. There you go. But like vages, I'm sure this there's... Is some, this is a new slogan for the Vag Revolution. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure vages are... They're so variant as well. And well, that's the other thing about, yeah. I think, men. We have no uh, concerns about that. You don't care if it's no. meatier or if it's... I mean, sometimes men get a little weird, but but yeah. most part, it's just like... Mm. It's there. Yeah. Yeah, women have. Pro I think women might be a Isn't little. Isn't that more... interesting? I wonder what we we should dig into that too. I'm gonna guess it's like biology, like it's on an uh, unconscious biological. Thing. I, I like... wonder. So for men, oh, this is a deep show today. For for men, they they're so neurologically wired into that part of their body that it, it when they start to feel inadequate personally, mm. they'll start to look at their penis as too small, too this, too that. It just sort of becomes a manifestation of their inadequacy. Interesting. So I'm wondering if somehow the women are responding to, like it's some sort of All right, surrogate, surrogate for how they feel about how the man feels about himself or something. Let me think about this. You know what else is weird? Yeah. I'm getting anxious talking about this. Uh oh. Is it is it because it's your concern? I, I, Do you have a concern about your painter? And no, it's just I don't know seat? where the anxiety is coming from. It's weird. I, it, I, I, no, I don't. Interesting. But it's it, but I'm but I'm aware of it. That you're it's getting a, anxious. That so I'm it's imagining an issue. this is a hard thing for men to talk about because I'm just getting anxious talking about Wait, it guys for no in the good booth, reason. Do you relate to this Ang as anxiousness about your painters? <laughs> uh, Not about your painter, but but having a woman judge your painter. Have a woman. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Uh, before a girl told me that it was good, yeah, right, right, and and ha and you remember the one that told you it was good, yeah, like that was like a moment for him. Of course, I remember See? the the one that that lied to me and told me that it was bad, and so the one that told me it was good changed my life forever. See, forever, that's true. So so therefore the the uh, the contrary is true, right? Of course, it'd be anxiety provoking then. Yeah. So this must have something to do with our. The, I think the analyst the would judgment. say. It has something to do with our, first, our, our castration anxieties, they would say, mm. I think. Well, yeah, because a woman, gosh, this is a great part of The Crown. You watch The Crown. Yeah. There's a great part where Winston Churchill lies to the queen. Mm. And the queen is advised to call him in and give him a stripping down. That was one of the, the best is. scenes. And, and what's, the name, what's the actor's name, John? Uh, Lithgow. Lithgow. It was one of the best acting moments I've ever seen. He, he looks so, so, so shamed, shamed but, by, so but, upset. But, but why does that work? And it's interesting. Yeah. It works because mommy, who is the, mo the queen is mommy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, quite literally, the queen mother, the queen, the queen. Yeah. Mommy is telling you you've done something bad. Yeah. So that's why the, the role of a queen is so powerful. Mm -hmm. She represents your mother, the mother of the country. And, and the British are very tied into all very that stuff. Very protective yeah. of, of the queen. Well, but also the mother, Britain, mother. It's all, all female imagery Brit around Britain. Correct. Britannia. But I thought how effective that was for her mm. psychologically to strip down powerful Winston Churchill. Mommy just gave me a lashing. And I imagine to some extent, maybe that's what a woman does sexually if she welcomes you this penis is fantastic oh my god this is the most beautiful penis versus oh my god can you i mean i just thinking i was thinking back not to mine oh my god but just mm, no nah, nothing yeah, to write yeah, home about yeah now i've been fortunate right that men are not as judgmental i've never had a guy be like oh your vagina is disgusting ne and if never, i had heard that never it probably, but you also you also will never hear who is the best vagina <laughs> you'll i never, mean you'll never, who the fuck it just knows? won't happen you won't hear that i've been told that it was pretty nice nice yeah
Well, good for I you. I was told it was exemplary. Now, this is before exemplary. I, I blasted out two children. Doesn't, exemplary. It doesn't look as good Well, no. men, men appreciate the... It was perfect okay. before I blasted uh, okay. out okay. two kids. Well, that's good. Um, but uh, I can imagine the horror. And I do think that, yeah, that dressing down of having a woman that you're... God, that was a good scene. Trusting. Yeah. Oh, my God. He, it just The oh, look on so his face great. was so powerful. I, felt, I was like, oh, my God, look at this. And I believed it was Winston Churchill. But also unconsciously, doesn't it? It is mummy, right? Yeah, yeah. And, oh, you're and, a guy. And, you're on it. Absolutely. Yeah, and when 100%. you find a partner yeah. in life, let's say there is, there has to be an unconscious Well, mummy, and also if you're thing. being sexual with somebody, you're, you're vulnerable. Uh, yeah. Right? You're and, naked. Mm, literally, literally, literally naked. So. And that person has to accept you inside their body. And, and yet Oof. it's not as vulnerable as even thinking about wearing a diaper and peeing on yourself. <laughs> so, so I want you to thank me for that. I can't <laughs> for wait. At least thinking about it and the joy it brought you. I can't wait for so. your die die. So. <laughs> Which one do you want, Pampers or Huggies? I prefer Pampers in my uh, it's house. It's gonna have to be the adult ones. What are they called? The um, depends. Depends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you some nice dinosaurs or something. I don't know. Do you like Mickey Mouse? No, that all feels you very size weird. Size five? I don't know. It feels <laughs> very weird to even to even be going. It's not. This is not about a child thing. This is about making Christina happy. This is. <laughs> oh. All right, I'll let you off. Okay, we'll talk about it. We'll think about it. Now I'm super anxious. Oh, about the die die. The whole thing. This whole. This whole. Well, the anxiety is. Here's the anxiety. Um, and it's interesting. It dovetails sure. into the castration anxiety. Oh. My, the anxiety is that it will allow you to persuade me to do something I won't, I won't. Uh, that I would never ever do or never even think about. And yet I'm anxious. Like, oh my gosh, she maybe maybe I'm under her sway. Maybe she'll persuade me. No, maybe no, no. I'll, no. Maybe I'll give into this. No. Here's the thing. No. Here's what we do, Drew. Mm -hmm. We have the power to persuade other gentlemen. Oh, we to do stuff. It. Yeah. Okay. The dove, well, there's really think? there's really expensive equipment in here. I don't right. know if we can. Oh, it. It's, yeah. It makes me sure. feel bad. It makes me, again. Haven't I, you guys but, shit your pants in there before? It's fine. Yeah, twice, but not on purpose. It's a shark, not a shit. Well, can we just have you sit out here for one of the episodes and pee and tell us how it feels? Yes, you can. Speaking of which, I'm having a colonoscopy between now and the next show. You are. Mm -hmm. Are you excited about the powerful farts you'll have when you come? No, I'm excited about the propofol <laughs> just being asleep. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, but uh, but I'm thinking maybe I should wear a diaper that night instead and, of getting... and there'll be a per there'll be a reason for it, and then maybe do a TikTok around that's it. That'd be and, great. And then report to you the next show. Now let me ask you. I know that you and Susan have <clears throat> more of a. Mm, not as open relationship when it comes to the brown and stuff and the yeah, fire. we're not into the brown. You're not into it. Yeah. So how do you deal with your colonoscopy prep and the aftermath I, of the farts? I am left to my own devices. I'm, I'm, a, I'm my own bathroom, so that's why. Oh, you have doing. your own bathroom, yeah. so you guys won't sleep in the same. We will, but I'm, I'll keep it to myself. Wow. Yeah. And you, ow. like, how do you not report to her? Like, whoa, yeah. dude, that was gnarly. Or like. I, I, I'm not married to Christina P. Oh. <laughs> so that's how, do you, how I don't. Because. <laughs> Because it doesn't, the way it brings you joy, opposite for her. Oh, but negative no joy. reinforcement. No negative joy. Negative mm -hmm. reinforcement. Yeah. No joy. Okay. Like you bring me that sh bullshit one more time and uh, no more BJs. And she'll cut your beach yeah, supply. Right. Oh. Yeah, see? <laughs> <laughs> I was joking with Tom in the hospital. I'm like, should I give you a bead right now? Oh. And he's like, um, like he just shit all day. It was so gross. <laughs> it was so vulgar and vile. Ugh. Have, have you seen got... her? Have you seen her brown uh, or being vulnerable like that? Yeah, she don't, don't dig it. She don't dig it. She yeah. doesn't want that. Nobody likes that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm having so much anxiety. It's really, about your about your this, diaper. Everything and the penis. about this. Eh, my, Did somebody? I know why. Somebody you, shamed you in the past. Who shamed you? Girlfriend, it's just mommy. It's so weird that all my anxiety is just being triggered it's by these mommy. conversations. It, is it no, your mother? No, it's the lack of control. You? It's the la yes, my mother shamed me. But about but, your penis. Hmm. I think it's more in the didn't certainly didn't give any positive. Okay. Right. So it was never no, no rapprochement. Remember none of that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's weird how much anxiety I'm getting just with this whole all this whole mm. show has delivered a big big wad of anxiety into my chest. Are you gonna call your therapist? No, I'll be just fine. gonna eat it. What are you gonna do with those feelings? Will you like exercise? Yeah, I'll probably exercise something like that. Okay. Or, or maybe go buy some depends and, and <laughs> <laughs> really, really. You know why I really took you? Lean, well, lean in, lean into I, the anxiety. I may have taken is, you back to that helpless phase because you mentioned helplessness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is the uh, I'm under your sway a bit. 
You're helplessness. Uh, not, it's not, I am not helpless, but, but it's that Emotional. zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it because we discussed that toddler era and that is one of the most vulnerable um, eras, babyhood? Yeah, but it, but it's more actually the process that, that I'm literally under your control <laughs> oh, <laughs> in, in okay. these, in the topic that I'm like, I would never consider and then, like not a million fucking years. And now it's like, Okay, Christine, if it makes you happy, well, we're, we're going to do this. No, no, no. But, but you trust me, right? Yeah. I will never lead you down a, such a horrible path. Yeah, well, I know that's bullshit. No, I will <laughs> so, make you wear a diaper. If you don't want to wear a diaper, I will make you wear a one diaper. one hour on it. So. No, I'm not, I'm not going to wear I'm not going to okay, make you wear a okay. diaper. I promise you. All right. I promise. I will never want to. I just want to see, uh, I what's will her name, Kayla? I want to see Kayla's version of this. Oh, my god. With the invitations. <laughs> Is that her name? Yeah, uh, I think uh, so, Kayla. Yeah. Well, let's make Nadav wear a diaper. This, that doesn't do anything for either of us. Well, I, I want to know. It does for me because I want to know what it feels like to do it as an adult. Like, just a grown Hold adult. On. Wait, Drew, why don't you get anxious at the thought of me peeing myself? Because it's you. It's you. <laughs> I, I don't, but I, I get nothing from it. I get nothing from that. You understand? I, I don't feel like um, you should, <laughs> A, and B, I just, uh, so I just want to know. I, I don't, are to pee myself. <laughs> no, I don't know why Christina is so getting off on the pee feeling thing and wanting to know so much about I it. I think I'm just curious, like, what is that like? Because I, I, my kids pee in diapers, and I'm, I change them all the time, and I'm like, oh, that must be nice, like, just to be able to let it go and someone else cleans it up. <laughs> and I just wonder, like, what does that feel like as an adult? <laughs> if I peed in my do you, why don't I try but I have to clean it up do you okay, like, should I just try it next week I don't you, mind I'll try it alright well you're the one that wants to know okay I'll just bring like I'll br I'll I feel like some... I'd flood the diapers too I worry about that I drink I, a lot of coffee I worry about but, that too but um, that's a good point uh, okay I'll pee in a diaper next week I'll do, do you, it do you I'll like do being it. a patient do you like being sick no. So you don't Are like you losing... kidding me? I'm not weak like a pussy you, sick. Right, right. But you don't like Never. losing control that way. Never. You know, like being, being somebody taking care no, of you totally. No, it doesn't happen. Because it feels like you were going in that direction. Oh, no. No, 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 no. 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 Okay, yeah. it, to me, I think it's to explore that vulnerability. I find it repugnant. <laughs> the vulnerability of peeing in a diaper. Like, oh my God. <gasps> there's if, nothing worse if, than that. If I were to do this... <laughs> <laughs> It's so bizarre. You what would find adult me, piece You would find diaper. me repugnant from then on. Maybe no. that's why I'm anxious. Maybe I, I know, know that's on some level, that that's really what's going on here. <laughs> is you're know. setting me up to be disgusting to you. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, yes, clearly. So yeah. Well, I mean, I don't want to be disgusting to you. No, you can never yeah. be. But you can never be because you're a doctor. You're medical. Oh, I, this is like this, this is, is an like, experiment. This is like this is a human experiment. Yeah. We need to get a human subject a committee together and an <laughs> IRB to approve this. Okay, I say what I'm gonna leave it your anxiety. I will pee in a diaper okay. next time. Nadav, mark this. I want a diaper. Go buy me a few. All right. Any, any, you know why Drew is anxious? Why is it? I why? think you like it, Drew. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> the, I, li I like the whole idea. I get off on it. Is that what you're saying? <gasps> we yeah, found your man. secret fetish. So, uh, I remember this move. I used to do it a long time ago. <laughs> I used to say, oh man, I, w I would hate to get tied up. <laughs> You know, I, I almost, I might do it for you if I get you mad, you know. <laughs> oh, do I have to now? You like this, huh? Okay, well, to be fair, now I've never thought of that technique, but I'll use it. But it's, it happens not be something I'm deploying now. I do appreciate the, the guidance, but that is not my, my uh, impulse right now. Secret fetish. No, I literally, A, would never have thought of this in a million years. <laughs> B, do, it. do not want to do this. But C was surprised how far down the path I went with Miss Christina P. Wow, so, I'm really so, impressed. Yeah, so here we are. So I want a diaper and so I want some, some wipes after because I want to wipe myself off. So yeah. get some wipes and a diaper. And I will pee at the end of the next episode. How about that? All right. And right. I'll, I'll sit here. I guess we'll put some newspaper down or something. <laughs> I don't know. We need to figure some. There's a whole bunch of like equipment there. Like I don't, well, That's why we have you guys. Yeah. yeah. We'll, 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 figure, we'll figure out a safe way for you to pee yourself on the show. <laughs> and maybe, and maybe, maybe, when are they going to put your cap on permanently? Oh, it's on permanently. They oh, glued it on yesterday. We could have you with the tooth off <laughs> and make, make you really a cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, no. It's back. It's yeah. on there. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm exhausted. Me too. That all was right. fun. It was fun. And we thank you all for being here and we'll <laughs> see you next time.
All conversations and information exchanged during participation of the Dr. Drew After Dark podcast or interaction on the drdrew.com website is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. Do not confuse this with treatment or physician medical advice or direction per se. You must always follow your medical professional's advice and direction. Nothing on these podcasts are posted on this site supplements or supersedes the relationship and direction of your medical caretakers. Please understand, I am not playing the role of physician in this environment per se. I'm educating. I am a licensed physician with specialty boards in American Board of Internal Medicine and American Board of Addiction Medicine.